The Book of Enoch, filled with mysteries of divine purpose, the cosmos, and the metaphysical, is not new to theologians and scholars of the metaphysical. However, the recent discovery of two additional books of Enoch has kept these scholars on the edge of their seats. Buried within these newly excavated books are revelations of celestial beings, chilling prophecies that echo through history, and a compelling glimpse into the afterlife. This isn't fiction, this is the reality hidden within the pages of the Book of Enoch. What forbidden knowledge do these ancient texts contain? How do the prophecies within the books of Enoch offer insight into historical events and the afterlife, and what implications do they hold for our world today? Join us as we explore the contents of the newly discovered books of Enoch, as what they reveal will scare you. If you are familiar with the biblical story of creation, you must have heard about Adam, the first human who lived on earth. A particular interest is Enoch, from the fourth generation, the great-great-great-great-grandson of Adam. The biblical stories narrating Enoch's life are some of the most engaging in biblical theological literature, as evidenced by his representation in multiple religious and mythological texts. Enoch was known not only in the Hebrew Bible but also in some Christian traditions. In these accounts, Enoch is depicted as the great-grandfather of Noah, the sole survivor of the Great Flood as chronicled in Genesis 5 verses 18-24. Enoch's story, however, astonishingly took a twist when he was said to have walked very close to God and was eventually taken into heaven without facing death. This was after he had lived for about 365 years, an amazing lifespan considering the average human lifespan today. Enoch's ascension into heaven may be the start of a journey that proves to be both fortifying and amusing. Another notable element of Enoch's ascension to heaven, as mentioned in the Bible, is the revelations he received. He is said to have received profound revelations on the secrets of creation and the mysteries related to the cosmos and the destiny of man. He duly and accurately noted these adventures, eventually leading to the Book of Enoch. Although Enoch was not the author, the book is attributed to him. It is a collection of the sacred writings of ancient Jews. The Book of Enoch explores Enoch's experience in greater length, including visions and teachings that are said to have been revealed to him. Its rich and valuable content includes lessons that awe people with their depth of knowledge. So the question is, what secrets are exposed by the Book of Enoch? Enoch's mystical and supernatural experience is a journey to heavenly spheres with elevation by mighty angels or divine messengers of God. This ascension represents one's departure from the earthly realm and entry into the dominion of heaven, a distinction between the human and celestial realms. Enoch walks with various angels, each playing a unique part and having individual functions within an angelic hierarchy, including archangels, seraphim, cherubim, and other ethereal characters. Enoch converses with these beings, and they reveal to him the names of the archangels and their positions from the highest to the lowest in the heavenly hierarchy. Such encounters emphasize the principle of a God-ordained order. Angels, being the messengers between the Creator and humankind, fulfill God's instructions through their ordained roles. At the highest level is God, the Almighty Creator and Ruler of all things. According to Enoch, cherubim and seraphim are the angels closest to the domain of God Almighty. The seraphim, with their burning six-winged bodies that continuously sing praises and worship God, represent the fiery warriors. The cherubim, who safeguard the divine wisdom, commonly positioned at the throne of God. There are also the archangels, the high-ranking angels who are messengers of God and agents of His will. They serve as the divine messengers who look over all the events in the cosmos and enforce divine pronouncements. Some archangels mentioned in this book of Enoch are Raphael, Gabriel, Michael, and Uriel. Additionally, Enoch describes the eons and wheels within his celestial visions. These angelic beings are associated with divine chariots and heavenly thrones, contributing to the celestial machinery of God's rule and being closely linked to God's presence. Enoch also speaks of angelic orders of principalities, powers, and rulerships tasked with supervising different parts of the universe. While principalities could have dominion over nations or groups of people, powers and rulers would have been granted jurisdiction over celestial bodies and natural phenomena. From administrators to warriors, their diverse roles are vital to maintaining universal order within the system based on the principle of hierarchy. Among these decrees is an angelic group called the Watchers, whom God charged with looking after and guiding humanity. While guarding humans, they ensure we comply with God's purposes. 
However, most of the watchers, under the command of the leader Samayaza, refused to fulfill their mission. They came to Earth, took human wives, and had hybrid kids called the Nephilim. The Nephilim became giant warriors who filled the world with evil and taught the people hidden mysteries, which led to widespread anxiety and discord. However, not all watchers deviated from God's purpose. The saints who remained faithful to God and refused to be part of the rebellion were also used to assert divine justice and order. The watchers who defiled their divine purpose were divided into a group called the Grigori. Along with their descendants, the Nephilim, they were allowed to roam the earth, causing much devastation until that finally led to the Great Flood. The spiritual and mystically significant claim of Enoch's vision of heaven and angels in the Book of Enoch highlights the human possibility of communicating with the divine and gaining knowledge beyond the realm of earth. His experiences of heavenly mysteries were conveyed in religious traditions as an example of the transformative power of mystical experiences. In addition, the book reveals Enoch's most exciting adventure. The narrative describes how Enoch journeys deep into the earth's depths while also traveling to Sheol, the abode of the dead. Indeed, this narrative illuminates more of Enoch's experiences beyond the realm of heaven. Enoch's journey starts to uncover the mysteries of the earth. It's not just a physical exploration, but a spiritual and cosmic experience in its deepest roots. Through his eyes, we see the true depths of the world, down to its very interior, looking into the very fabrics of the universe. In his journey, he is able to connect with different natural forces, including fire, water, earth, and air, that are harmonious within nature. The sensation he encounters brings a feeling of awe that is strange to normal daily life. As he glimpses the cycle of life and death, this peculiar journey brings to our attention that the whole earth symbolizes divine law and order. Enoch's journey continues as he descends to Sheol, the underworld abode. In many religious and mythological traditions, Sheol is described as a realm where souls are stowed away for judgment or eternity. In this domain, Enoch witnesses the fate of both the wicked and the righteous, a heartbreaking sign of divine justice. He narrates the impact of human actions, the just rewards for honorable deeds, and the searing punishments for evil ones, illustrating the spirit world and the moral universe that controls it. His experience is not merely about seeing, it is beyond passively observing. It is the spiritual revelation that proves that human choice may suffer eternal consequences and helps to believe in the existence of a greater purpose, an order that goes beyond the physical realm. These experiences set Enoch apart from other prophets and play a critical role in making him a great visionary and messenger of divine knowledge. On an excursion into the universe and the underworld, he encounters the numinous and the transmundane, which explain the riddles of creation and existence. They also provide insights into the divine mystery of justice. Enoch's encounters with angelic beings during his ascent into the heavens give him insight into what happened with creation, God's secret design, and how the universe operates. His journey into the otherworldly realm of celestial beings stands out more like a cosmic astronomy nightclub class, where individuals learn much about the cosmic order and the mechanics of the heavenly bodies that govern the universe. From these interactions, he develops a comprehensive and gradual awareness of creations in a workings and how man is a part of it. According to the Book of Enoch, during his journey to the celestial realm, Enoch learned about other subjects like astronomy, astrology, and time measurement. From there, he acquired advanced astronomical knowledge of the vast cosmos, solar system, stars, and other planets. These ideas were valuable for recognizing the formations of stars and understanding their place in the overall magnificence of the universe. The knowledge Enoch acquired on astrology did not end with horoscopes. He understood how the arrangement of the celestial bodies determines human events and destiny, viewing them as an integral part of the divine plan linked to life on earth. Enoch's journey also caused him to reflect on the concept of time. He could grasp the idea of the divisions of time, days, months, and years, and how they were connected with cosmic movements. This awareness provided clear evidence that time is, in essence, aligned with the law of God and proceeds in forms of cycles, not finite straight lines. Although Enoch had a good grasp of astronomy, astrology, and the calendar, it wasn't just intellectual, it was a profound spiritual insight into the connection between the earthly and heavenly realms, which manifested the cosmos as a word of divine wisdom. After Enoch reveled in his profound visions, he also started prophesying about different events such as divine judgment. He had visions of heaven and hell. 
Consequently, he predicted a future when all wrongdoings would be righted temporarily through maintaining the divine order and cosmic balance. Enoch saw how disastrous the consequences of sinning could be. He learned the hard lesson about the irrevocable nature of one's deeds. But Enoch's prophesies didn't stop there. He foresaw judgment and the eventual triumph of righteousness, the reward of the faithful, and the final purpose of people. According to a long-established notion, the Book of Enoch was written as Old Testament literature under Enoch. It is termed apocryphal or pseudepigraphical because it is not included in canonical literature, but it still provides deep spiritual and historical knowledge. The Book of Enoch saw a continuous and gradual formation as many of its authors had existing knowledge that they contributed along the way. Regarding its relation to other religions, the Book of Enoch touches on many religious and mythological traditions such as Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. In Judaism, the Hebrew Bible speaks of Enoch as a righteous person who became so close to God that he was carried away by God. The Book of Enoch expands on Enoch's story and his teachings, providing us with more details than we could get from the official scriptures. In some early Christian traditions, the Book of Enoch is important, and some Christian communities refer to it. They see Enoch's prophesies and the fallen angels as the roots of their beliefs and traditions. However, it remains outside the Christian canon recognized by most denominations or congregations. In Islam, Enoch, who is known as Idris, is one of the prophets and he is also mentioned in the Quran. Although the Book of Enoch is not an Islamic holy scripture, some Islamic scholars have acknowledged the significance of its teachings and themes in the writings and sayings of Islamic mystics. In essence, the Book of Enoch holds a key role in the religious and literary legacy of ancient Jews. It tangentially touches on diverse traditions and provides a glimpse into their cosmology, angelology, and eschatology. Its significance is beyond its canonical status. It touches the souls of people who seek a spiritual understanding of the world and an appreciation for the mystery of existence. However, the Book of Enoch is a subject of deep debate among scholars because of its uncertain origin and roots. Nevertheless, it is possible to give a broad outline of the origins. The core of the Book of Enoch, known as the Book of the Watchers, spanning chapters 1 to 36, is believed to have originated in Jewish circles during the Second Temple period, which extends from the 5th century BCE to the 1st century CE. This part speaks of Enoch's visions and teachings and is filled with the watchers or the fallen angels. The Book of Enoch differs from other works of the Old Testament as it is not the product of a sole writer but the result of a compilation of at least three authors and editors at different times. Scholars assume that the text was subjected to many revisions, with some alterations and additions. They concluded that it might contain many sections or books that form the whole work. The book, classified as apocalyptic literature and popular during the Second Temple period, shares the main features with other Jewish apocalyptic texts. For example, the eschatology of divine judgment, the vision of heaven and angels, and the revelatory knowledge of God. Perhaps one of the reasons the Book of Enoch is very popular is that it can be found in various languages, including Gez, Ethiopian, Aramaic, and Greek, in both the original version and several fragments. However, the most popular version is the Ethiopian Enoch or One Enoch, which consists of many books besides the Book of the Watchers. The acceptance of the Book of Enoch by Jews and Christians differed from one community to the next. Some early Christians found passages from it very significant, and this was reflected in their writings. However, the core Jewish and Christian authorities could not recognize it as part of the accepted biblical canon. As time passed, the Book of Enoch became famous only among several circles of learned people. The manuscript was rediscovered in the Western world in the 18th century by scholars and theologians. It triggered new interest, further studies, and more exploration of its contents. Other religions have diverse responses to the Book of Enoch and related matters, which vary from one culture to another in the context of mythology. Although the Book of Enoch is not a canonical Bible book, it is counted among the broad religious and literary traditions. It gives some points of contact with the spiritual and cultural traditions of different religions and cultures that went beyond Judaism and Christianity. One striking case is the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, which contains Enoch, especially the Ethiopian Enoch, another name for one Enoch, as a deuterocanonical work. This inclusion is one of the distinctive features of their Christian faith, as it showed that the Book of Enoch has played a major role in developing their faith tradition. 
In Islamic custom, the Quran does not directly refer to the Book of Enoch and any story about him, but several connections and similarities between Enochic doctrine and some Islamic views still exist today. For example, the Quran talks about righteous people who walked with God and echoes some parts of Enoch's story. The Judeo-Christian tradition, including characters and stories from the Hebrew Bible and the New Testament, is a significant element that has helped develop other religions. Elements of Enochic literature and motifs featuring angels and apocalyptic visions are reflected in the doctrines and paintings of many religions and mystical communities. Besides the Book of Enoch, the Enochic literature formed some foundations of Western esotericism and mystical traditions. Organizations such as the Rosicrucian and particular Freemasonry branches have not only studied and brought the Enochian writings into their belief systems but also included them. The study of Enochic traditions by comparative religion students allows us to grasp the cross-cultural exchange of religious ideas and the growth of religious thought. Besides, it is imperative to acknowledge that these crossroads are multi-layered and multifaceted. The impact of Enoch's book and Enochic traditions on other religions varies depending on the specific contexts and historical times. Interpretations and the significance of Enochic texts also differ greatly among religious and scholarly circles. Fortunately, two additional books of Enoch have been discovered recently, sparking much academic and religious curiosity and speculation. The newly discovered texts hope to illuminate the puzzle about the mysterious Enoch and the tradition of mystical exclusion. The compelling question arises, how important are these newly discovered manuscripts? What kind of revelations do they reveal, and does their content have any possibility of redefining current religious views and narratives? Firstly, scholars and hobbyists are passionate about looking into the details of the uncovered materials. Considering the importance of the Book of Enoch, these other texts provide a chance to investigate Enochic literature further and its impact. One could probably assume that, among other things, these books could continue Enoch's visionary experiences. Many hope to learn more about celestial realms, including new revelations about the order of the universe and humankind's place within it. Additionally, the existence of these manuscripts will bring to the fore the subject of their influence on present-day religious discourse. Would it demand an investigation into the established manner of interpreting Enochian traditions or rethinking established theological perceptions? Would they come up with entirely new ideas and themes that would certainly connect with today's seekers of God? These texts' implications could be groundbreaking in various religious traditions, perhaps determining how Enoch is perceived and revered. Thankfully, the second book of Enoch validates the first book of Enoch as it goes into more detail about his experiences in the metaphysical realm. It tells of Enoch's ascending to the holy mountain of God. The book explains that Enoch rose from a lowly servant of servants to the heights of the Most High, passing through ten heavens filled with celestial wonders that mortal eyes had never seen. The sacred text unveils the mysterious ascension of Enoch. Guided by the wings of an angel, he ascends first to the supernatural realm of heaven, where his gaze pierces through the clouds, beholding an immense sea more magnificent than any on earth. He also sees the dominion of two hundred angels over the stars. Guided further, Enoch reached the second heaven, where darkness surpassed terrestrial shadows and sorrowful prisoners awaited divine judgment. Conversing with the angels, he learned these prisoners had forsaken God's commandments, thus earning their dismal fate. Eventually, the journey led Enoch to the third heaven, where paradise unfolded before him, crowned by the sacred tree of life, a symbol of eternal bliss and divine presence. According to certain Jewish writings, a heavenly garden of Eden exists, tended by three hundred angels who exult in praise of the Almighty. These celestial guardians reveal to Enoch that this sacred domain is reserved for the righteous, those who shun wickedness, uphold justice, offer food to the hungry, clothe the naked, lift the fallen, aid orphan souls, and walk blamelessly in service to God alone. An eternal inheritance awaits such souls in this divine paradise. To the north of this blessed garden lies a distressing depth of torment, cloaked in darkness and despair where fire and ice intertwine. Merciless angels, armed with weapons, rule over this realm of punishment where those who dish in a god and indulge in unnatural sins find their dreadful end. This includes practitioners of forbidden arts like magic and witchcraft, thieves and liars, the envious and hateful, the immoral and violent, and those who exploit people in need for personal gain. Such transgressors face the fiery river and the unrelenting anguish of this place of retribution. 
Enoch's celestial journey continued to the fourth heaven, where he beheld the celestial mechanics of the sun and moon, witnessing their orbits and the luminous retinue of stars and attendant angels. Among these heavenly phenomena, he observed the majestic flight of the phoenixes, also known as seraphim and cherubim, honoring the divine majesty of creation. In the second book of Enoch, celestial beings known as phoenixes are depicted with lion-like feet, crocodile heads, and a radiant rainbow-hued appearance. As tall as 900 feet, they possess wings similar to angels, numbering 12 each. They dutifully accompany the sun, bestowing warmth and dew on the earth. Enoch encountered a legion of formidable angelic soldiers called Grigory, or Watchers, upon reaching the fifth heaven. These soldiers bore a striking resemblance to humans but were of giant stature. Despite their imposing presence, they remained silent and in a gloomy mood. Astonished by the absence of worship in this realm, Enoch queried the angels. He learned that these watchers had rebelled against God, descending to earth to lay with mortal women, thus bringing corruption and chaos. Their punishment was severe, evoking tears from the angelic hosts. Ascending to the sixth heaven, Enoch beheld seven groups of shining angels, similar in appearance and purpose. These archangels explained the mysteries of celestial mechanics and the governance of the cosmos, overseeing seasons, years, rivers, and seas, and recording humanity's deeds. In the seventh heaven, Enoch was enveloped in a dazzling blaze of light, surrounded by mighty archangels and celestial forces, including dominions, orders, and governments. Among them were cherubim and seraphim, thrones of the many-eyed, and various ranks of heavenly beings. Overwhelmed by the sight, Enoch trembled in fear before the majesty of the celestial hierarchy. As Enoch stood trembling before the throne of God, the angels reassured him, telling him not to fear. From a distance, they revealed the majestic seat of God situated in the lofty height of the tenth heaven. With their task fulfilled, the angels left Enoch alone, a sensation that filled him with fear. However, his concern was brief as the archangel Gabriel swiftly appeared, guiding Enoch into the presence of the Almighty. Along the way, Enoch beheld the eighth heaven where the seasons shift and the cosmos unveils its eternal course. He also glimpsed the ninth heaven where the stars reside. Approaching the throne of God, Enoch prostrated himself in reverence, only to be commanded by the divine to stand before him. His humble garments were instantly transformed into robes of radiant glory, and he was anointed with heavenly grace. Transformed into a likeness of the glorious ones of God, Enoch was given the sacred task of a scribe, entrusted to record the destinies of souls and the secrets of heaven and earth. God revealed to Enoch the divine plan of creation, unfolding the mysteries of the heavens and the earth. His lesson illuminated the sanctity of the seventh day, a day of rest similar to Christ's thousand-year reign. The eth millennium, devoid of time, stood distinct from the preceding eras. Enoch was charged with sharing the sacred writings among humanity, for the earth had been tarnished by idolatry and wickedness, prompting divine judgment through the flood. However, a future generation would arise from the remnant seed, blessed by Enoch's revelations. Given thirty days to impart this knowledge, Enoch was escorted by his guardian angels before being returned to his earthly abode, charged with a divine mission of profound importance. Upon returning to earth, Enoch gathered his children to impart the celestial wisdom he had received. He recounted his encounters with the heavenly bodies and the guardians of the underworld, describing them as formidable serpentine beings with fiery eyes and razor-sharp teeth. Enoch observed humanity's deeds, noting various actions ranging from virtuous to evil. He emphasized that true honor lies in reverence for God, for those who fear the divine will inherit greater glory in the days to come. He warned against the foolishness of unjust anger, declaring that those who harm the innocent will face divine retribution. Even spitting on another's face would bring forth God's judgment. Enoch preached the virtues of compassion and charity, proclaiming blessings upon those who uplift the oppressed and extend aid to the needy. He likened Judgment Day to a marketplace where every action and intention would be weighed and measured, determining one's ultimate reward. Enoch emphasized the importance of righteous conduct and good deeds in his teachings, guiding his children toward moral integrity and divine favor. Regarding the third book of Enoch, the realization that the version of Enoch is closer in time to our era carries profound implications for us. It underscores ancient texts' enduring relevance and impact on contemporary thought and spirituality. According to modern scholars, the third book of Enoch was written by Rabbi Ishmael, 
who became a high priest after visions of ascension to heaven. One of the most intriguing aspects of the third book of Enoch is Enoch's transformation into the archangel Metatron, a figure revered across multiple religious traditions. Metatron's role as a celestial mediator and scribe highlights themes of divine communication and transformation. However, the concept of Metatron also raises complex theological questions and challenges. While revered in some traditions, the idea of a once-human angel serving as a mediator between God and humanity may stray from mainstream theological views. The presence of Metatron in various religious texts, including the Babylonian Talmud and mystical Kabbalistic writings, underscores the diversity and richness of religious thought. It invites scholars and seekers alike to explore the multifaceted nature of spiritual beliefs and traditions. Ultimately, the study of the Book of Enoch and the figure of Metatron encourages a deeper reflection on the intersections of faith, history, and interpretation. It invites us to engage with ancient texts in a contemporary context, seeking wisdom and inspiration for our spiritual journeys. The development of the Talmud, a central text of Judaism, is a fascinating journey through Jewish oral tradition and written commentary. Initially transmitted orally, the teachings of the Talmud were eventually compiled and recorded in the 2nd century AD as the Mishnah. Subsequent commentaries on the Mishnah formed the Gomorrah, completing the Talmud. The Babylonian Talmud, mentioned earlier, reached its final form in the 5th century AD. Within these writings, Metatron emerges as a complex and enigmatic figure. According to some traditions, Metatron was once a mortal named Enoch, renowned for his steadfast devotion to God as described in the book of Genesis. However, other versions suggest that Metatron's origins differ from Enoch's, portraying him as a distinct celestial being. In the narratives where Enoch transformed into Metatron, he undergoes a transcendent transition upon ascending to heaven, taking a position of exceptional authority and glory. Revered as second only to God, Metatron serves as a heavenly scribe, mediator, and advocate for the people of Israel. Legends even attribute to him the leadership of Israel during their wilderness journey. Over time, the legend of Metatron has captured the imagination of occultists and New Age practitioners, who interpret him as a symbol of spiritual ascension and empowerment. In this contemporary context, Metatron is revered as one of the most powerful archangels, representing humanity's capacity for transformation and spiritual enlightenment. The enduring fascination with Metatron reflects a universal longing for connection with the divine and the quest for higher spiritual understanding. Whether viewed through the lens of ancient Jewish mysticism or modern esoteric practices, Metatron inspires seekers on their journey towards spiritual growth and enlightenment. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos like this one.